a lot of people be fascinated to know, uh, most people are fascinated with the essays in general, but how hard is the selection process and how difficult was it for you? Uh, you know, it's, it's a long process to get in, it runs over 11 months and you know, we started off with probably like 150 recruits and at the end of it, you know, there were, there were four of us uh, and you know, it's, it's a carefully designed process to whittle down people naturally. So, you know, nobody's ever shouting at you. It's all about self-motivation, self-discipline, your set tasks, you know, across the mountains, heavy weights, heavy rucksacks, day and night, relentless pace, you know, whatever the weather. And, you know, naturally the group kind of shrinks, but, you know, I remember day one starting off with all of these guys, you know, these 150, and they're all sort of big muscle beefcake guys, and, you know, thinking, God, help. Uh, but actually the four of us that passed at the end were the regular looking guys, but were self-motivated and could be cheerful when it was difficult, could work hard when the conditions are against you and, you know, put your head down when it's freezing, dry and rainy, get on with it. And actually that's the process and I think people have the image of, you know, the SAS of being a lot of diving in and out of windows in black and all of that. And there's a part of it that is like that, but that comes after the selection process. Initially, they want to see people who can work hard when you're up against it. Do you reckon you could do the, the process again? Do you think you could go through a selection again now? Um, probably not. <laughs> you know, I think at the time you're, you know, you're that much younger and that much kind of in the zone, but I think there's an element that once you're there, you, you've, you've earned the right to be there. There's that meritocracy like that. It doesn't matter what your background is, and there's a great sense of pride once you join your squadron and you want to live up to that. And even the older soldiers who've been there 20 years, and it, they might be sort of less fit, but they're so used to doing it year in, year out, that they're phenomenally kind of naturally strong. It just sort of builds up, I think. Yeah, I kind of relate to that. Um, <laughs> you, you, we're not, you're on a break from, from the SAS, uh, and kind of like a holiday. And if you're Australian, you would have gone to Bali and got your hair braided. Uh, but you're not. So uh, what is a guy whose job it is to jump out of planes and you know, live off the land do when he's on a holiday? Uh, he goes to Africa and jumps out of planes and lives off the land. But you had quite a bad accident when you jumped out of a plane in Africa, didn't you? I did. We were, we were down in southern Africa. I was helping with the anti-poaching and one of, um, you know, one of my jobs in the SS had been, you know, I was trained in all the combat survival and the demolitions, the medics and skydiving. And that's kind of skills that I've eventually used in Man vs Wild. But at the time we were down there helping with this anti-poaching, we had a break. We went off, we were skydiving, as he said, and it was a routine jump. We were you know, having fun, and uh, a canopy split on opening. Uh, I came spiraling down very fast. I, I broke my back in three places, spent you know, the next 18 months in rehab place, and, and essentially should have died really that day. And, and it was kind of a miracle that you know, I wasn't paralyzed and, and that I survived it. Kind of wish you went to Bali, didn't you? Just would have been <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> you, you write about it in, in your book, uh, in your autobiography, Mud, Sweat and Tears. Um, I'd ask you to just read that section if you could, so you can see it in the words of when you wrote it. Sure, yeah. I mean, this, this just talks a little bit about the moment where, you know, some, I don't know, sometimes in life you think, you know, everything's always going well and sometimes life hits you sideways and you get hit left field and sometimes you don't see it coming. One by one the guys drop from the door and quickly fall away. Soon I'm alone in the cargo area of the plane. I look down. Then I slide off the step and as the wind moulds my body into an arch I can feel it respond to my movements. As I drop a shoulder the wind begins to spin me, and the horizon shifts before my eyes. It's a feeling known as the freedom of the sky. 3,000 feet. Time to pull. Routine. The canopy opens with a crack, then I look up. Instead of a smooth rectangular shape above me, I've got a deformed looking tangular chute, a nightmare to control. I start to panic. I'm running out of time. My descent is fast, far too fast. I smash onto the desert floor in a cloud of dust and dirt directly on my back. I'm writhing in a blur of pain, tears and desert dust. I have this pit in my stomach fear 
that life would never be the same again. And yeah, very powerful stuff. Obviously, that went on to go into a very, very long process of rehabilitation and hospitalisation. And it would have been, I presume, both physically torturous and also mentally torturous, spending that long in rehab. Yeah, I think, you know, physically, obviously, there was, you know, it was bad in the sense that there's a lot of constant pain. And you, I'd always just been used to be fit and healthy and strong and be able to move and swing around and do handstands and, you know, do all the stuff that I was always goofing around doing and suddenly, you know, you're in agony just turning to get a drink or, you know, shift a little bit and you can't get out of bed and, and initially it's, you get a lot of kind of support and then you start to feel guilty for the support after the weeks and the months go by and then the mental game kicks in a bit more again and, you know, I think people often say to me, you must have been very positive to go from a broken back to the you know, to the top of the world eventually. But for me, it wasn't like that. It was a long, dark road of stumbles and trips and steps backwards, and slowly you claw back your confidence and your movement. 